Now, remember in the summer when things get warm and the stuff inside your boot wheel or your electric car get a bit warm and it causes problems. I think we've got a cure for that. And it involves one of these and one of these. Right, what are they? Well, this one is a temperature controller. And basically what you do is you wire that side up to 12 volts you wire this side up to something that you want to come on when it gets to a certain temperature you set the gauge and you just leave it and then this well this is a 12 volt fan two high powered fans with a very small column that will suck air in from there and blow it out there or suck air from there and blow it out there. So the likes of the bathroom vents that we've got on there, which we have to put a computer fan in because most bathroom vents seem to be household ones and not 12 volt. This would work perfect for a bathroom. You could literally just wire it to a switch and suck air out and push it out there. And they're only small. I mean, they're a tiny little thing, but they pack some power. Now inside there is two 12 volt brushless motors. They are thicker than the normal computer ones, which gives them quite a lot of power. Now for what we're gonna use them for, I have taken the fans off there and I've turned them round because they were basically pulling air in and pushing the air out, which is what you'd want for a bathroom. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to suck the air in and push the air out. Because inside there is our batteries, is our solar controller, our double Victor and Orion's, the lot. Now inside there can get quite warm. It's also got the fridge in there. And the batteries in there. And everything else electrical are in there. Now granted, this is not going to be the cure for a fully, you know, aircon boot. It's not. But it's certainly going to help. And you could use this on a million other things as well whether you want to pull heat into an area from one area or put cold air into an area from another area, it will really help. So if I, say for instance, you've got stuff under seats or under bench seats and that area doesn't necessarily get warm. You could have one of them attached onto the inside, pulling the warm air that your van's got inside the living quarters, pushing it into that. You could even have one fan pulling in and the other fan pulling out which would be good because that is then going to cycle the air around. You could even fit two if you wanted, but for us, we're gonna mount it just there like that. And then what it will do is this whole area here, which there are two big holes. So we do have that hole there, which goes right the way through to the floor. And we have that hole there, which again, goes right the way through to the floor. Meaning that when the doors are shut, this area is not airtight. We've still got the availability of oxygen coming in. Now, for us to basically put it in there, yeah, we need to put a hole in the back, not bothered about that. But we also need to test the system and check if it's working before we actually hardwire it into the van and leave it just to do its thing. So, to test everything, I'm gonna be using our EcoFlow River Pro 2. Like all EcoFlow products, the River 2 Pro is just superb. And the good thing I like about EcoFlow is you can get the small ones, the medium ones, the big ones, the huge ones. The EcoFlow River Pro 2 is kind of an in-between and it comes with the same guarantees that all the other EcoFlow range do. So you've got five-year warranty it will live past 3,000 cycles. So that's a full discharge and a full charge. The EcoFlow River Pro 2 has three USBs, normal USBs, one 100 watt USB-C, three mains adapters, 800 watt inverter inside it, and it has a surcharge of 1,600 watts. Pure sine wave inverter built in. Also, your cigarette lighter port, which is what we're gonna be using it for now. 768 watt hours, which basically works out to around about 40 amp hours and it's a cracking little unit it's light it's compact comes in at 17.2 pounds which is probably 7.8 kilograms if the paperwork tells me right which it will do it can be charged like all the other ecoflow stuff you've got mains charging you've got 
off your van or your car charging. You've also got solar charging as well. And the times do vary. Around about 70 minutes for it to charge fully off the mains, eight to nine hours off a car, and solar is going to vary on what solar you're putting into it. So probably between four and nine hours on solar, and that's to a full charge. But what we're going to do is using the EcoFlow, we're going to use a power cable, same as I've done loads of times before, and we're going to plug that in to the DC and turn it on. So they're now live. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect the lives to the live part of the temperature sensor. And then we're going to plug the fan into the other side of the temperature sensor. So we'll put a couple of quick connections on the temperature sensor. We've got a couple of quick connections coming from the EcoFlow unit, which we can wire them up now. So we can go in with the positive. And we can go in with the negative. It's given us a temperature of 13.9. Now with these small units, you have an up and a down arrow. The up arrow is gonna be the temperature that you want the unit to come on with. The down arrow is the temperature that you want it to go off at. Dead easy to set them. Press it once and then hold it in to set your temperature to go into the unit. So we'll set that say at 25 just for this demonstration set that at 25 just leave it until it stops flashing once you've set it so 25 that's it's going to come on at 25 press the up arrow hold that in and then we want it to come off at say 20 we'll leave it at that let that stop flashing dead simple so it's 13.8 c now it's going to come on at 25 and it's going to go off at 20. Now all we need to do is connect our fans. So, we're gonna have the negative going into the black, and then the positive will go into the yellow. This unit is now wired up to the fans, and it's all being powered from the EcoFlow unit. So if we now take the temperature sensor and put it in our hands. It'll go 15, 16, once this reaches 20, Right, so now we know that the whole unit works, we've just got to mount it. Like I said, I'm going to mount ours just there, which will be just like that. And then that will pull air into the boot if it's getting a little bit warm. We'll probably need about five of them, to be honest, to keep it proper cool. But let's go with one, because I think this will make a lot of difference. If you've seen Alex Frude's video with him fitness two DCs to DCs, he does have two fans on his unit pulling air in to keep them cool. It's the same kind of thing, same kind of idea. So we need to measure this, get a hole cut, don't tell Emma, and get it mounted. Right, I've got our hole marked up there. I don't know if you can see it. That way and that way. So I'm going to get the multi-tool on that and cut this piece out. <laughs> There we go. Now that fits perfect, doesn't it? Gonna made a bit of a mess. Right, Hoover time. Another thing we use the EcoFlow for is to charge the Hoover because you can't do without a Hoover and this little thing is a monster. The thing we like about it is you can just unplug the battery, put the battery in the um, cage. Um, boy, does Jimmy do some sucking. Right, so I'm going to wire this in. Well, I'm going to screw it in. It does come with um, some screws. So pop the uh, cables through first. Plunk it in there. Right, let's get that screwed in. Right, that is in nice and tight. And I've got an extra screw. Bonus. Do love a bonus screw. Now, like I said before, the beauty about something like the EcoFlow is that we can just take the, um, the battery off the... Uh, Hoover and we can plug it in. It's currently pulling off 20 watts on the DC, which is nothing. Another good thing is that we can pull the, the soldering iron in, get the end of them all soldered up so we're not using connections, we've actually used solder and some heat shrink pipes as well. So let that warm up and then we'll um, 
we will give it a bit of a solder. That's them two done. And then we'll do the two that go into the fans. Tin them up. Right, so now, now what we need to do is we need to get in, tin the back of where the actual power goes to the, the fans, tin them in, solder them in, mount it to the wall, and then we can find a 12 volt feed from the fuse box, which is literally just there, and bring it to it, fused. So we just cut down the cables that go into the unit, made them all level, and then we'll just strip them back and get a bit of solder on them. That's the fire alarm. Remember them little fire alarms of us? Well, they work. We'll just move that outside for now. Take the main unit, get some heat shrink on there or on the top, solder them two up, and then we can um, screw it up. But I think what we may do is because you've got solder on them, they're gonna be quite stiff. So we'll just make a little U-bend on each one, and then we can hook them both together. Just give them a squeeze, and then we can finish them off with the solder. Perfect. That one is going nowhere now. Let's get that sleeve down before it melts. Right, that's fully covered that. And then we'll do the same with the black. So get some heat on them, get them all nice and warm so the heat shrink works. Well, that was a load of faffing about, but we've got to control it in up there. I've just rooted the actual thermometer part, the sensor, just round the top of the roof because it only needs to be in this area that's there now it's coming up at 14.5 the on temperature is going to be 25 and i think 20 will be set to the temperature where it shuts off if i get my hand onto the sensor now and we'll see how much air it's pulling in from the outside into the garage just hold that sensor 16 Now that is pulling quite a lot of air in to be fair and it's facing all the way back to the Victor and the Ryans. So this whole area here will get quite warm. They are going to help dramatically. So they should turn off at 20. There we go. They're in. And they work fine. We will have to wait and see in summertime to see what sort of temperatures that that area gets up to. And then we can adjust on the little thermometer thing, on, on the temperature sensor, we can adjust that to what it needs to be. Right now, it's February. Can't see anything overheating in there in February. Now, like I said, these would be ideal for your kitchen or your bathroom in your van if you want to extract the fans they are a good bit of kit they're only cheap and you got to admit that the footprint of them is pretty small if i'd have seen these when we were building our van that's what i'd have gone for look at how much stuff we have plugged into the ecoflow we had the soldering iron it's charging the battery for the hoover we had the heat thing i've had a light plugged into it as well all the links to everything that I've used will be in the description of the video, whether it be the little thermometer thing. And they also do one that will work the other way around, where is if it's cold, it will turn something on to make it warmer. So the opposite direction of what this one does. I'll link the fans, and I'll leave you all the links to EcoFlow. Go and take a look at them. Don't listen to people in chat rooms and forums and Facebooks and Reddits and things like that. Make your own assumption of a product after you have used it. There would always be people throwing dummies out of prams because that's what they do. It's just the way of the world. I'm going, right, catch you later. I think there's an Emma with a cup of tea somewhere.